Each day, more does are now entering estrus, decreasing the chances of finding a mature buck alone and on his feet, moving. Our attention now turns to the unpredictable task of finding a hot doe. As the old axiom goes, find the does and you will find the bucks. November 9th dawns cold, perfect. Caleb Mason is back on stand, hoping to encounter the big six-pointer he saw the day before. Good morning and welcome to Midwest Whitetail. Today is November 9th and um, it's starting to break daylight here. Um, we had a really great day of hunting yesterday. Matt put down the split G3 buck in the morning. We sat here last night. We came here about midday and we were just covered up in deer. There may be 20 deer last night. Um, the acorns are still falling. We're in an area we call the Big Timber. We've got the river in behind us. And this is kind of a, uh, a hard oak um, river bottom. So it's really flat, not a lot of terrain features, but um, I mean, the deer were obviously back in here. So we decided to just leave our stand set up and uh, come back in here this morning. And it looks like they're already starting to move back here. So hopefully we'll get it done here this morning. a doe through here they're they're still down over here um, that's that's a deer we've put on the hit list this year this is kind of his core area so hopefully they'll make it back through here With the hot doe in the area and Big Six right behind her, Caleb anxiously waits for him or another buck to come within bow range. 85 miles to the southwest, I settle into one of the most legendary stands on my farm. November 9th, Death Ridge. The name speaks for itself. That's the spot where we're hunting this morning. And I could take you back through the video archives at Midwest Whitetail and show you a lot of really good hunts from this tree stand right here. In fact, this is the eight year anniversary, November 9th, 2011, when I killed the great big deer on here that we called the G5 buck. Just a really cool spot with a lot of history. We're probably about 300 yards as the crow flies from where we were sitting that morning uh, when that one-eyed buck came in and got away. So I mean, we're in the game on that deer. So now it's just a matter of putting in some stand time here this morning and, and uh, maybe a one-eyed buck will come by or another surprise buck. There's another one blowing. Another, right? What's that? Back in eastern Iowa, Caleb spots what appears to be the hot doe coming his way. Staring this way. 
Dude, wore me out. Two deer on the hit list, two deer down in two days, man. That was awesome. So they came through here right away in the morning and he was hot on her trail. And I didn't have a shot opportunity, couldn't. They were just running all over the place and they circled back in behind us. Then we see them emerge and she got a little nervous. She got a little bit of our wind that pushed her out in front of us and then he just followed her. He bedded down a few times. I had a, I had a shot opportunity, but she was pegged on me. So as she kind of walked out in front of us, I, he, he gave me a shot opportunity here about 20 yards and he only ran 40 yards. He's over there. That is awesome. That is a ginormous body deer. The, the oldest and biggest deer we've had on the farm and one that we were targeting. So it's a great story for us. Here he is, this is a big six. This was one of three deer that we were after this year. Uh, we caught up with the split G3 buck yesterday. Matt harvested him in a really, really fun hunt. Um, uh, so then we were after two other deer after Matt took that one, the broken beam buck, which we, we haven't seen um, on hoof, just on the, the trail cameras. And then this one, uh, uh, this big six, he kind of lived on the, the north end of the farm and uh, kind of dominated this area. Just a really old, um, big bodied deer. More than happy with this deer. This is um, an exciting hunt this year for Matt and I. Uh, targeting deer like we did these, these two mature deer that we harvested this year. And uh, yeah, so that's one of the first times where we've kind of laid out a plan from the beginning and, and it came to fruition. So we're just really thrilled that that took place for us this year. While Caleb and Matt celebrate their incredible 24 hours of success, team member Zach Rasmus is also in an Eastern Iowa tree stand. It's the morning of November 9th and I'm all set up for this morning's hunt. I uh, was pretty anxious to get back into the tree this morning after what was a really you know, rough hunt last night. We saw a lot of deer and I actually had an opportunity at a hit list buck. And Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it happen, but it is really, really good conditions this morning. Low 30s. Kind of a unique wind though. It's southwest and it's going to switch directly to west. And that kind of afforded me the opportunity of sitting right on the edge of this big ridge line. And uh, kind of what I'm banking on is that these bucks are going to continue to cruise this ridge and just checking in this bedding area for does. This is a really, really aggressive move this morning but uh, this is the time of the year to be aggressive. So, like I said, I was anxious to get in the tree this morning after last night's hunt, but uh, you know, it's part of hunting. There's gonna be lots of, you know, highs and lots of lows. So that's what I love about it, but uh, it's good to be back in the tree. Zach tucks in on the ridge, hoping there's a hot doe in the area. 370 miles to the east, in central Illinois, Jim Shearer puts out a decoy.
hard to believe that's a doe decoy with buck antlers. It just looks so good. So they come into it like that and, and uh, just stand around it, walk around it, smell it. I don't use any scent with this decoy. Uh, so far, I've not had any deer really, really spook from it. I've had a doe and a, and a buck come in so far. But it's just cool. I hope a big one comes in. I'd love to see one come in. cool hunt with the decoy. I've got just a, a, a doe decoy that I had drilled half inch holes in and I put buck antlers on it. The, it works awesome though. It's easier to carry than a full size buck decoy. And I don't think the size bothers the other, uh, the bucks at all. And a big buck. So I reached for my grunt call. And so I just snort wheezed really loud and then grunted and that big buck couldn't take it. He couldn't see the decoy just from the curvature of the hill, not till he was about 40 yards from him. But when he did see it, he started posturing and worked his way around right downwind of it. Came into four steps of that decoy, gave me a good shot. He ran all the way across the field, about 175 yards, and it looked like he went down, but I'm not really sure, so. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> that was the coolest hunt I think I've ever been on. It was an awesome hunt. That was the coolest hunt I've ever been on in my life. Just a neat deer and a great successful hunt and uh, just a, a cool way to start my year. Thanks for joining us on uh, Chasing November. Back in Eastern Iowa, Zach Rosmus is reaching the end of his morning. Thank you.
I'm shaking. That was crazy, guys. Oh, man. It's like 10.45 right now. And it's been a super, super slow hunt. I literally just texted my wife and said, hey, super slow hunt, I'm gonna tear down, you know, type of thing and get out of here. I was planning on sitting most of the day today. And I literally had the camera tore down and all that was left up was a tree arm. And I looked down the hill and I saw a doe. And I was like, okay, you know, that's fine. You know, type of thing, I'll just let her work her way through. And there's a big mature buck right behind her. It was a struggle. It really was. You know, self-filming is not easy. This is a <laughs> not easy thing to do by yourself. But man, that is a big buck and I think I smoked him. You know, during this time of the year, you know, you can have some really slow hunts or you can be right, you know, in the money, you know, too. And this morning, wow. Yes. <laughs> Well, this buck is a great example of how quickly your season can change. You know, Nolan and I, we had a really great hunt last night, and I actually had an opportunity at one of my hit list bucks, and unfortunately we weren't able to make it happen last night. But you know, when I saw this big mature buck with his giant body come into bow range this morning, I was super excited, and you know, it, it ended with a, a great, you know, resolution to it and wrapping my hands around this Iowa buck. morning of November 9th is nothing short of incredible. Zach and Caleb's hunts show just how good the action can be when there is a hot doe near your stand. The rut, however, is not a one-size-fits-all event. There are many ways to skin the proverbial cat. Jim Shearer's decoy, along with timely calling, demonstrates another likely approach. Many of our team members found success on this day, possibly our best ever. Memories are often more than filled tags, however. That evening, Casey Virgine is hunting in northern Wisconsin with his father Rick behind the camera to share the memory. really happy to get him. He was the, the buck that we wanted to get the most. Um, good amount of history with him. Like I said, it kind of makes it fun when it gets personal that you there's a specific buck that you're after and everything worked worked to a T. So I'm happy with how everything turned out here today. That same evening in Ohio, team member Jake Justice is tucked into a redneck blind. He too has his father, Tab Justice, behind the camera. got the beautiful split brow that that's his uh what we know oh how we always knew it was him just a great great old buck i think he's six and a half years old i'm anxious to send the teeth in and find out one of the first times where we've kind of laid out a plan from the beginning and and it came to fruition so we're just really thrilled that that took place for us this year and so i just snort wheezed really loud 
and then grunted and that big buck couldn't take it. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> that was the coolest hunt I think I've ever been on. You know, during this time of the year, you know, you can have some really slow hunts or you can be right, you know, in the money, you know, too. And this morning, wow, yes. <laughs> Had we been playing Monopoly today, we would have had hotels on every square. Seemingly everything on the board fell our way. We spend all year dreaming of hunts like these. Rarely does reality outrun the dream, but today it did. Those who still have tags look ahead with high anticipation, hoping to join the celebration. But it is with a sense of increased urgency that we head afield now. The rut's infamous lull is right around the corner. Though still a ways from hitting the panic button, we know every decision now must be a good one. Where will that next hot doe show up? That is where we need to be. But doe movement is so random now. We hate to depend purely on luck, but that is the game. Regardless of the work and preparation, sometimes luck plays the deciding role when you are chasing November. <laughs>